everyone. Uh, my name is Brad Seibert from Tavon. Thank you for having me today on the second day of the Mortgage Innovators Conference after lunch. It is a pleasure to be here. So I head up the prop tech division for Tabant, and it is one of our larger divisions at the company. And what I'm here today is not to actually talk about Tavant at all, but to talk a little bit more about the home buying experience that we're seeing not just here in California, but we're seeing across the country and the dramatic shifts and differences we've had. So anyone who's in this boat knows it's a roller coaster right now. I'm gonna walk some of us through it and talk a little bit about the value of artificial intelligence and machine learning for companies, not just real estate companies, not just lenders, but all companies together as we kind of move through this journey. So today I'll be talking about prop tech and AI based home buying models. All right, let's jump right into things. So as we jump into things here, a lot has changed in the next or in the last couple of uh, weeks or months. Obviously, we're on the tail end of a pandemic. But literally on the front page of the Los Angeles Times this week was an article, found your California dream home. Good luck with that. It may be gone by tomorrow. And the, the photo you see here is a couple touring a house. They've got a 25 minute time slot to tour a home in Tustin, which is in Orange County, California. And there's a whole waiting line of people who've uh, time slots after them. So it's fascinating how this kind of works out, but let's jump into it a little bit more. So this isn't just a California problem. I think we all know that. And when we look at all the data, the data is there from a million different data sources, from the CMBA, from the MBA, from Housing Wire, from GCA, all these places, everything comes back to a couple key concepts. There's low inventory right now. We all know that. There are low mortgage interest rates right now. We know that. And people want homes. They want to get out of renting homes in downtown San Francisco, in downtown Nashville, in downtown Atlanta. They want homes with yards. But the big thing is the shift towards the home concept and what this home concept really means for many people. So let's double click into it a little bit more. Who is driving our industry right now? We could say lenders are driving it because rates are at an all time low. We could say that real estate agents and prop tech companies are driving it because inventory is at an all time low. We could say the American home buyers driving it because they want a new home. But all these things circle around to one thing, supply and demand. And then this side, we're only talking about demand. So demand is what's driving our in, or what is driving our industry right now. So as we talk about demand a little bit more, look at the, the home buying journey. And there's many different ways you can look at it. But today, more than ever, demand owns the home buying journey. The home buyer doesn't own the decision. The real estate agent doesn't own it. The lender doesn't own it. None of these key people are actually driving it. Right now, over the past three to six months, demand has been driving it. And demand is an artificially created thing. And so when you look at buying a home, and we've all bought homes before, you could buy a home based purely on data and science. And a small few people have done that. Most people buy homes based on emotion. They found that home. They say, I could raise a family here or my family's moving out, I could downsize into this one. This is a great first time home buyer's home for me. That's when emotion really comes in and emotion overhauls or essentially overtakes the aspect we're talking about when we talk about the pure data and science that we all know when it comes to home buying. We all work in this industry. We've tracked mortgage rates for the longest time. We've seen home values go up and down. Well, probably not as much down, but we've seen them go up. And so we know this. But then when you come to this point in your life, and you know, I've been at this point in my life before, if not now, you realize that it's not just about the dollar amount. It's about this, this idea of a home for you, your significant others, maybe your kids, maybe your grandkids, maybe it's the first home that you and your partner are buying. But regardless, a home is a home. And the home is the emotional aspect that brings all this together. And unfortunately, there's no data, science, AI, machine learning that can actually capture this element of the value of a home for each individual person because that value differs for each individual person. So let's look at it a little bit more with a little use case we have here. So our use case, it's a very simple use case. And I want everyone to actually like internalize this as this is you. Um, this is your family. This is my family actually. Uh, that's not me by the way. But this is my family. You want a yard. You want a new home. And guess what? The pandemic has shifted your work balance around, and maybe now you can work remote. And so remote work is real work as you jump into it a little bit more. 
And so as we talk about this concept of a family, you search for a home. So I randomly, randomly picked a place. It ended up being uh, Southern California, Carlsbad. Now, why did I pick that area? There aren't actually, there's not that much industry there. Uh, there's industry in Orange County and there's industry in San Diego. But in Carlsbad itself, it's a place where people go because they could actually work from home. So today, and this is all data from literally today, these homes you see right here, these are the homes that come up. 80% of them are already pending. 80%, four out of these five homes are pending that I look at right now. How are they pending? They've been on the market for days, days, in a, in a place where there literally is no jobs. So they're in a place where there's no jobs and they're going on the market for days and retirees aren't moving into them and millionaires aren't moving into them. People who want to essentially escape the city in different areas are moving into them. So you're like, okay, this might be relevant for California. How's it relevant for the rest of the US? It is relevant. This is happening across the country everywhere. I'm using this as an example for us here uh, with the California MBA as we talk about it a little bit more. But this is a relevant example as we talk about it. So let's go into this example more. So finally, you've gone through all this and you found your home. You, you've searched and you've found one and this is the home you found. And you know what? It looks great. Everything looks like the stars aligned. I can see on the map, it's a mile from the ocean. It's got great school districts down there. Everything looks great. And you know what? 1.29 is a lot, a lot of money. But for this individual person looking for a home, it's the max end. It's the highest amount they're willing to pay or actually that they could pay, that they're pre-approved for. So all the stars look like they've aligned. And then you double click into it a little bit more. And you say, wait a minute, wait a minute. This home was sold 10 months ago for $980,000. 10 months ago in the pandemic itself, if you actually want to think about it. And now at the tail end of the pandemic, it's being listed for over $300,000 more. Guess what? No renovations were made to this specific property. Nothing changed on this property. Nothing changed at all. Only one thing changed that could spur a 33% increase in home price in 10 months, and that is demand. In this instance, 33% equals $300,000. This is a lot of money. Again, nothing changed with this home, uh, albeit they're really good pictures. I'm not going to lie. Maybe it was staged a little bit better, but no renovations were done whatsoever. So what changed? We're talking about this Southern California part of Carlsbad, um, that there is really not that much industry, and yet the demand is at a sky high. So how do we react to this? Well, you either use emotion or use data. But the vast majority of us, myself included, would use emotion. And emotion is, I want that house. I'm willing to pay what I could. I will have to, you know, sell, I don't know, something to get in there. But, but I'll make it happen for me and my family. And this is the reality that a lot of us have right now. And again, it is not a California reality. It is an American reality. It's just heavier hit in certain markets. So we look at this a little bit more. The reality sets in. Great. What will happen next? Let's talk about what can happen next. We as an industry need to look at how AI and ML can drive prop tech and can drive what we're doing. And we all know that the value is here. And we all know that all of this is things that we can work off of. And there's a lot of really smart companies who've already started down this path and they've got really good solutions. Uh, and so let's look at some of these solutions. Holistically, data is powerful. Think about a propensity to list model. So on the left, you see a certain neighborhood, this neighborhood uh, that we're looking at in Southern California. There's only one home for sale today. And on the right, you see the exact same map of that neighborhood with essentially percentage signs next to certain properties. And this is the propensity to list model that is being applied to it. And this model says the likelihood that that home will be listed to be sold from the current home buyer in the next 180 days. And now the model actually can get more specific. It can tell you the next 90 days as well. But what you're looking at right here is, okay, I see all these homes. Well, this first one is a 19% chance it's gonna be sold in the next, or listed in the next, uh, next, sorry, it'll be listed in the next six months but I see other ones that are 71% chance. And so this data here, this data that we look for and that we're looking at, this isn't just for the home buyer to know. It is extremely valuable for a home buyer 
to know the likelihood of a home to be listed for sale in the future. And there, again, there are a lot of great companies working on models like this right now, but these models are more than just relevant for the home buyer. They're relevant for all real estate agents. They're relevant for lenders who both own that property essentially with the lender and are financing that property for them. Uh, and they are with the, the home buyers as well there. So think about it. It's valuable for the home buyers and sellers. It's valuable for the real estate agents. It's value, valuable for the mortgage lenders. It's valuable for the whole ecosystem as we go through. Let's look at this just a little bit more as we go in. So the why for us, the why for us in our industry, that is a really, really good question. I think everyone knows the why. The why is we are in the home buying industry. We are actually in the American dream industry. And the American dream industry is essentially buying a home and getting into a home. And the vast majority of Americans are not independently wealthy and can't buy a home just outright with cash. So then how does this information help all of us in this home buying journey? So as technologies forge ahead, the why for AI ML modeling comes down to six key buckets, in my opinion. The value of listing a home and saying when that home is going to be listed, finding and buying a home so that home buyers can know, in addition to the real estate agent, can know when they can find a home and the chance that that home is going to go on the market. Then they can figure out, do they really want to hone in on a specific neighborhood versus a larger geographic city, things like that. Selling a home. I want to know the likelihood that the homes around me, when they're going to sell. Because if, if a model shows me as a home seller that the vast majority of homes are going to sell or be listed on August 1st, guess what? I want to be in front of them. I'm going to list it on July 1st. That's the value of these models there. The one-click buying of a home. This is the mortgage industry's dream. You know, find home, click home, buy home, done. Uh, a couple companies advertise this. It is a concept that can be achieved, but these models help really get things up funnel. Previous in our lives, we've all looked at, you know, soft credit reports, you know, when someone was home shopping, hot hits on someone's credit report, things like this. Let's take it a step up. Let's know when homes are going to be sold because then we know when inventory is going to come up and available on the market. And this inventory isn't just inventory for real estate agents and lenders. It helps with title and closing, and it helps with everything with the home buying ecosystem all in. So these are really the, the key aspects that we talk about here in, in the home buying journey. So when we look at the value of AI, machine learning, everything in home buying, it hits on many different aspects. It hits on the aspects of the consumer finding a home. It hits on the aspects of the real estate agent listing and selling the home. It hits on the aspect of the lenders knowing when a property that might be in their portfolio is going to be listed for sale. And that person who's on that property might be looking for another home. Title, escrow, all home valuations around it. Huge for iBuyers, iFunders, huge for everything there. The key is, as an industry, a lending industry, we're really lucky right now. But as we focus on what's next, understanding what's next, AI and data, that is what is going to drive decisions across all the various aspects of the home buying journey. So uh, again, my name is Brad Seibert. I'm here from Tavant. I wanted to thank you all for taking the time with me today. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.